This is the Silicdyne Reparix, and at only 40 millimeters long and 12 millimeters wide and weighing in at only six grams, it is the smallest and lightest GPS rocketry transmitter in the world. That's an inch and a half long with the antenna and under half an inch wide, and Silicdyne is going to give one of you viewers the whole Reparix bundle, which you'll see in a moment, for free. I'm gonna tell you how to enter to win that, so stick around, but first, let's unbox the Reparix and go over what you get. The Reparix comes as a bundle deal with the transmitter itself, the Bluetooth ground station and antenna, a USB-C cable for charging the ground station, a USB data transfer cable for the transmitter, three pigtails for batteries to power the transmitter, and M2 screws with the threaded inserts for mounting. For size perspective, here it is next to the already rather small featherweight GPS transmitter. It really is that tiny. In addition, the lid of the package has a QR code printed on it for the user manual, and honestly the foam line package is pretty nice, I've just been using it to continue to store all of the stuff for this thing. Now I want to talk about some of the features of the Reparix. Like I said, very very tiny, almost unbelievably tiny. I'm going to bring it closer to the camera just because it is almost hard to believe how small this thing is. But it packs plenty of punch. For one, it uses U-blocks, so it's capable of ranges up to 80 kilometers, which is around 260,000 feet. My personal favorite feature of the Reparix is that it also has an onboard accelerometer, so even when you're locked out for restriction reasons, you're still getting live telemetry data and accurate speed and acceleration readings. With most GPS transmitters, because GPS legally has to lock out beyond certain speeds, you're not getting an accurate reading of the speed. However, the Reparix's accelerometer isn't restricted in the same way that GPS is, so you still get full accurate data on the speed and acceleration. Another one of my favorite features actually worked out in a big way for me, which I'll talk about here in a second, is the fact that it has black box recording. So it's natively storing all the data from recent flights on board, and you can plug it in directly to your PC with that cable I showed you in the unboxing section. And the Silicdyne website has a Reparix tool where you can download all that data and you can export it as a CSV or as a KML file, which you can view in Google Maps. Another big and important feature that the Reparix has is auto frequency hopping. So if you run into an already occupied frequency, it'll automatically change the channel so that you're not interfering with anybody else and nobody's interfering with you. The accelerometer is good up to 200 Gs and 2000 degrees per second of rotation. So because it has that available data, it'll also give you live rocket status updates as the rocket's in the air, such as hitting Apogee, deploying a drogue parachute, deploying a main parachute, impact zone, location, and all of that good stuff you like to see out of a GPS transmitter. And finally, a cool feature of this is that the input voltage is extremely forgiving and variable. So it can run anything from 3.2 volts or a 1S LiPo all the way up to 16 volts. So if you really wanna get some incredible runtime, you wanna put it on like a giant 4S battery, you can. Here's the battery I used. This is a 180 milliamp hour 2S battery, which is a pretty small battery, but funny enough, it's bigger than the actual GPS transmitter itself and it weighs a lot more. With this battery, I had a pretty unbelievable amount of battery life. It probably sat on in the rocket for about 45 minutes before it actually flew. Then I recovered the rocket and probably a good five hours later, pulled the rocket out of my car and the battery was still on. I could still see the LED light through the coupler at night. Um, so a lot of peace of mind in the battery capability, uh, even on a small 180 milliamp hour 2S pack like this. So if you really wanted to get some maximum lifetime out of it and you have the spare room for a big battery, then you can certainly squeeze plenty of runtime out of this thing. Okay, I'm gonna put this down and then let's talk about my little review here. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Silicdyne is going to give away a full Reparix package. That is the Reparix with the ground station, the antenna, and all the tidbits that you saw in the unboxing section completely for free to one of you viewers. All you have to do to enter is share this video, post it on Facebook, post it on Instagram, send it to your friends, do whatever you want. Just share the video, then go to the YouTube comment section, 
drop a comment telling me where you shared it and what rocket you would love to put a silicdyne reparix in. Whether you build a big or small rocket, that thing is pretty applicable in terms of form factor. By now, it should be pretty obvious that I'm working with silicdyne for this video, and in fact, they sent me this one for free. However, I am going to still tell you my genuine opinion of it, because my experience with it was a little bit rocky, but not rocky enough to not make me excited to use it again. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's go back to the unboxing section for a second. The pair of pigtails that comes with this thing. I'm not a fan. You'd be hard pressed finding a pair of hands worse to put a soldering iron in than these, okay? So my instant reaction to something that requires soldering is a little bit negative, even though I've done plenty of soldering. I've soldered PCBs and soldering two wires is not a problem at all. I did it, and if my soldering is capable of holding up to the rock and rolling and flying on an M motor and landing a little bit faster than it should have, then your soldering will be just fine. I can pretty much guarantee that. I do wish that instead maybe it came with a JST plug or even an adapter to JST for the connector that's on the actual board itself because if you fly LiPos, you know that JST is almost kind of the gold standard for small LiPos at this point. However, I understand that the JSD connector, relative to the size of the tracker itself, is pretty bulky. So I understand wanting that small connector and the small gauge wires and having the ability to put a tiny, tiny battery in there and get that thing battery and all in a little tiny space. It's a great thing, but in my particular case, I would rather have sacrificed the space savings for a little bit more 5 IQ user friendliness, I'll say. If you're familiar with my electronics base, you know that I like things that just plug in and go. It's super easy and super fast. And truth be told, the five minute soldering job was not the end of the world. And now I just plug a JST LiPo into it like anything else and we're off to the races. Everything's fine. That wasn't the biggest problem that I faced when using the Reprix, unfortunately. My friend Elijah was helping me track it and he actually has experience with this transmitter as well. The big issue I had was with the Android app that works hand in hand with the ground station. It's awesome to have a small handheld Bluetooth ground station. I love the display on it and the design of it all looks really awesome. And the app layout itself looks really good and seems pretty functional at the surface level. However, I don't know if it was because I was trying to switch it to Imperial units from metric or what, but what ended up happening was when the rocket took off, it detected an apogee of 23 feet and that was it. I didn't get any more data after that. Initially, I thought that maybe the chuff from the old motor was what made it kind of funky and it thought that it had taken off and landed because it had chuffed, but it, that actually wasn't the case at all. The transmitted app data was actually all completely there. The full flight was there. And importantly, the entire time I had live data, it was updating the map so I could see where the rocket was for the whole flight, but I did not have any telemetry data the whole time, which is a little bit unfortunate, but really a commodity in the world of tracking rockets, especially for someone like me who doesn't use GPS all that often in the first place. What's important to me is being able to see where my rocket is and not suddenly losing the connection and not being able to find it. And that didn't happen throughout the whole flight. I had good lock on the rocket the whole time, the whole time it was sitting on the pad and the whole time it was on the ground and I walked right to it. And then being able to export the CSV from the app and see that all the packets were there for the max altitude of the rocket and discussing this whole thing with the owner of Silicdyne, it seems like it was just a little bit of an unfortunate app edge case in which uh, I didn't get any data when I should have. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but I was still able to track the rocket and I still have all the data from the flight. I was also able to use the black box feature and download the file as a KML, and which is a really cool thing. I used to love looking at Vern Knoll's website because before any of this was just like readily available for the rocketry community, he had, he had Google Earth maps of his flights and everything It's a really cool thing. So it is fun for me to be able to see that. And like I said, all the data was there, so I'm glad. Right now, it seems like the app bugs are still being worked out, which is a little bit unfortunate, but for the actual hardware itself, it seems like it's perfectly functional and doing just fine. So while I can't stand here and say that it's a flawless product and everything just works perfect, I can say that I do recommend it. 
After all, there's other GPS on the market that also has its own share of issues, right? So the final point I wanna bring up about the Reparix is the price. And Silicdyne is based in France, so the price is 319 euros. And at the current exchange rate, that is about $375 for the complete package. That battery costs you about $12, and that's really the only thing you need to add. As you saw, it comes with screws, it comes with the pigtails for the battery and everything. You need a battery and whatever connector of choice you have, or if you wanna just get a battery and solder the pigtail directly to it and figure out charging it and everything, that's, uh, you know, go crazy. Ultimately though, I'm happy with the product, and I hope that uh, everything else gets sorted out pretty quickly because the product itself, the actual physical transmitter and the whole kit, the receiver and everything seems to work quite well. And for $375, it's about on par for pricing for other GPS stuff. Having the added benefits of its tiny size and the accelerometer is a really cool thing. Don't forget if you want to win yourself a Silicdyne Reparix bundle, all you gotta do is share this video and then drop a comment telling me how you shared it and what rocket you want to put one in and then you're automatically entered you have one week from the day that i post this video to share and enter and i'm going to let a random comment picker decide who won and we'll get you your reparix sent out if you're watching this the day that i put it out that'd be tuesday december 16th 2025 join me back here tonight on the rocket vlogs youtube channel for the final anti-gravity group podcast live stream of 2025 going to be a good time. We're just going to be talking about winter projects and having a little bit of a, a laid back, uh, this is the end type scenario. If you don't listen to the Anti-Gravity Group podcast, it's a podcast hosted by me and three of my friends where all we do is talk about rockets for an hour and we do live ones every other week and put them up as well. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts, including places like Apple and Spotify and all the other fun ones. And it is also available right here on YouTube at the YouTube channel, The Anti-Gravity Group. If you want to help support the channel and see behind the scenes stuff like this, uh, the Patreon people have known about the Reparix for months now, for the entire time I've had it. I just haven't had a chance to fly it yet, so thank you to Silicdyne for being patient with my uh, release of this video. I know it took a really long time. I apologize. But if you want to see behind the scenes pictures and videos and little sneak previews of projects and stuff that I got going on, there's a whole bunch of rockets back there you can see that need to get built. You wanna see that all coming down the pipeline before videos get made about it, go to patreon.com slash rocket vlogs or press the join button right below this video. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members whose names are scrolling across the screen right now. Other than that, I gotta get back to working on this rocket that you can't see off screen, so I'm gonna get out of here. My name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a rocket vlogs video. I'll see you all next time.